Hello guys, it's Steven here and welcome back to another unboxing and first look video and today we're going to check out the Hoposh HDR PVR2 Gaming Edition. Now well, um, most of you guys will know what that thing is doing, so it's an external capture card to record console gameplay and here on the package it says it can record Xbox 360, PS3 or any gameplay in HD. You can upload and share your best games online, you can stream with that. So basically um, you can do a lot of things which are not here on the package and also it's compatible with the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, you just have to switch off HDCP I think. Um, but I have shown you a tutorial on how to bypass HDCP with a splitter and we'll talk about this when we do the full tutorial on how to use it but this is just the unboxing video. Now well, that's the normal gaming edition, there's also a gaming edition plus, it has Mac support, I don't care about that, I hate Mac. Then um, also it supports optical audio in, which I'm not using at all, and also 5.1 surround sound, which I also don't care about. So I'm actually happy with the HD PVR gaming edition, which you can see right over here. As I've said, it doesn't say anything about the new consoles here, like Xbox One and PS4, but um, you can record gameplay from them too. It's still top of the notch, even though this product is actually kinda old. It's still expensive, so you can find a link to the best price down below in the description, so on Amazon or the official shop. And yeah, um, it's definitely better than um, the card I was using um, until now, which is the Roxio GameCap HD Pro. I mean, it's way cheaper, but this card absolutely sucks. I had to reconnect this like five times, then black screens, and honestly, it was crashing. Um, the codec is shit. So yeah, I don't want to use this anymore, so I just switched to the Hoposh HDR PV PVR2. Okay, um, yeah, today we're going to unbox it, have a look um, at the box itself, what you can do with it, we'll explain some things, and um, in the next days you will see a tutorial on how to use it with the latest generation of consoles. For sure, you can record everything which has HDMI output, and there's also a cinch cable in there. But yeah, um, let's just go, let's unbox this little beauty, and don't forget to check out the link down below in the description if interested. Okay guys, then let's go. Okay guys, so there we go. Here's the package. Well, um, this box is recording with the H.264 codec up to full HD. It can record, as I've said before, the PlayStation 3 too, but um, not over HDMI if you don't use a splitter. So let's see what we have here inside of the box. And yeah, um, the box, so the hardware itself, it's kind of old, but um, a friend of mine, he got the same box and he said um, there was now a software update and um, now it has really, really many functions. So yeah, we'll check that out in the full review of that box. Okay, um, there we go. Here we have a cinch components cable, as you can see. And basically, um, this is for the PlayStation 3. As I've told you before, the PlayStation 3 comes with HTCP. Now the problem is that um, the signal is then protected and you cannot capture it. So you have to use that um, components cable, but there should be a, an adapter inside. So basically, you have here the cinch um, connectors, then you're going to use the adapter, and then you're going to connect it to the HD, HD PVR2 to, to record the signal. So the cable is really kind of long, so no problem to get that from your console to the box. Here the splitter, really massive cable, gold-plated connector, so, so far that's looking good. Okay, let's continue, and there we go. Here we have another cable, so what the hell is that? Okay, that's the USB cable. We can quickly get it out of the box. And there we go. So the USB cable, it's really long and that's basically the connection to your computer. So you need to have a computer near your console in order to record. And it's quite long, so make sure the computer is within two meters to your console. So that's kind of important. And yeah, I'm just using a notebook or the computer next to my gaming monitor. So I guess in here we have the power supply. And there we go, let's check it out. What do we have here? Well, it comes with the correct power socket connector for your country, no need to worry, that's Hoposh, a um, real big company. And let's have a look at the power supply. It says here um, 0 0.5 amps, okay, that's input, and the output is 6 volts and 1.66 amps, so something around 10 watts. Okay, um, looking good so far, DC in check, as you can see, we'll have a look at that a little bit later. Then what do we have here? Okay, um, that's also really important. So that's basically an adapter for the cinch connectors which you have on the composite cable or composites. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that since I'm um, a German. 
I'm actually Austrian and there we go. So here you can see how that looks. Here we have the um, connector and here we have the cinch port. All right, so we'll check that out a little bit later and then let's see what else we have got in here. Man, that's like Christmas, so many packages. And here we have an HDMI cable. And yeah, you need one to connect, um, for instance, your console to the HDR PVR, HD PVR 2 Gaming Edition. Um, you only need two of them if you're going to use the PlayStation 4 or Xbox One or Xbox 360. For the PlayStation 3, if you don't use a splitter to bypass HTCP, you can actually use the composite cable. Okay, um, yeah, HDMI cables, cable is looking really good. It's really thick, um, gold-plated connector, so the quality of it looks kind of good. Then there we go. Next thing, and I guess we have only the user manual and the box left. And what do we have here? HD PVR2 Gaming Edition Quick Install Guide. And there must be a DVD inside, and there we go. So basically the recording software is on there and the drivers. But probably we have to download that from the internet because this is um, for sure outdated. Version 2.1, okay. Great, and let's come to the interesting part. Let's get out the box. So here we have the HD PVR2 Gaming Edition, and there we go. So that's a nice looking box and that's basically all you need to record gameplay in full HD. And yeah, um, I would say let's have a closer look at that thing here, right? So there we go guys, here's the Hoposh HDR PVR2. And that particular model here, it's the model 1482. I'm not really sure if they have changed something, but that is probably the latest version. 1482 and the Gaming Edition, not the Gaming Edition Plus. The front here has the Hoposh logo, on the back side we have all the connectors, and the top here it comes with a aluminum plate, and very thin, but it looks kind of nice, so it looks like brushed aluminum here, and I think it actually is, and feels really good. Now here you have a huge power button, so basically that's the button to turn it on, and once it's on, um, it should also light up here in green, I guess. Now on the bottom side of the device, we have here such a grid with a lot of holes, as we can see, and this is basically to get the heat out of the device, because um, this is absolutely quiet. It's a fanless box, and here we can see a heat sink shining through the grid, so basically the heat sink, so the main heat is um, coming from here, and you have to get the heat out of the device. But well, it's fanless, so you have to have a lot of holes to get um, some fresh air in there. Okay, um, here in there we have a screw, so you could just open it up, but you don't want to do that actually. Here we have the sticker with the model number, and here the warranty seal, so probably there's another screw under the warranty seal. In each corner we have such rubber Teflon pads, and they basically give you some nice grip, so that the box is not sliding around on your desk. Then here on the back side of the device we have all the ports and connectors, so let's quickly check them out. First of all, HDMI out. So that's the output of this TV box, you connect an HDMI cable and you connect the other end to your TV or monitor, basically on a device you want to play on. Because you cannot play um, on your computer over USB, because there's a delay with a couple of seconds, um, this won't be possible. Here we have HDMI in, so that's basically the input to the box. And um, the output of your console, so the HDMI cable from your console or whatever you want to record, will be connected here on the HDMI in port. Here we have AV in, so that's an AV cable included, and also a PS3 adapter, so if you're going to record the PlayStation 3. And um, you can also bypass HDCP with a split and use the HDMI in, so that's absolutely no problem, and I have a tutorial on this. Then here we have the USB port, so basically um, that's the port to connect it to your computer. There's a USB cable supplied in the box, so just take it and connect the box to your computer. But don't forget to hook it up to the power, so 6 volts DC in, otherwise it won't power on. Here also LED, green or red, so if it's on or not, if it's getting power. And here we have some more um, ventilation holes for heat dissipation. And you have seen there are many at the bottom, so I wouldn't just put the box on something which also gets hot, so don't put it on a console. Maybe just put it on your desk and that should be fine. So there we go. So guys, I've now connected the HD PVR2 to my computer, it's fully working and ready to record. But yeah, before you um, just connect it to your computer, make sure you install the drivers and the software suite. You can use the CD you get with the device, so just download the latest drivers and the software suite from hopporsch.com. Okay, um, when it's actually ready to record but not recording, it should light up here in yellow or orange. 
and when you connect it for the first time it should light up here in green or blue and when you start recording so let me press the record button you see it lights up all the way here in green so you always know in which state the device is so if it's recording or not if it's on or not and that's a pretty good thing and I think it looks fucking sexy I mean just check this out this looks really cool but I think it can also light up in blue because I've seen um, a blue shiny LED here too I'm not really sure what state that was but I will tell you that in my full review Oh yeah guys, so we're now here on the computer and let's have a quick look at the Hop Horse Capture Suite. So when you install that, you also get the Arcs of Chobis video editor. I'm not using that at all, actually it's crap and I just prefer Pinnacle Studios because it can deal perfectly well with 4K for instance. Okay, then let's go, let's start the Hop Horse Capture Suite. Let's make this big here and you see there's some problem with um, this pack ratio. It doesn't fill my 4K monitor which is 16 to 9, not sure why. PS4 connected to the um, to the box and you see here the preview image. It's lagging a little bit but um, don't worry there is no pass through delay. So the delay between HDM HDMI in and HDMI out is really zero. If you would now play on a second monitor you don't see any delay. But um, the delay is here on the USB side so um, just streaming the picture over the USB port that is really um, kind of laggy and you can just use it here as a preview picture and you won't be able to play on your computer. So that's not possible but at least you see um, what you're recording and that's a pretty good thing. Okay, um, here we have input resolution. So input resolution is full HD at 60 FPS. Um, well, um, I think the box can only record at 30. I'm not sure, but it says, you know, 60 FPS, okay. And it's now scaled to um, HD 720p at 30 FPS, but we'll check that out in the settings. Okay, um, here um, in the right bottom corner, we can switch the audio on or off, okay. Then here we have the um, capture device, so you can also switch between different capture cards if you have more of them. Here you can start to record, so if I press record, it's now recording. You can see also my face cam is working, this will also be recorded. And the file size with, for instance, the M2 TS codec, it's around one, one and a half megabyte per second, which um, is about four gigabyte per hour, which is a good thing. Okay, um, MP4, TS, so you can switch here between the codec, you can set the file name here and it will be saved in the folder you did set up in the settings. Okay, video input is HDMI, but you can switch here between component 2, S-Video, Composite, so whatever you want to, and also the audio input can be switched, and on the Gaming Edition Plus there's also optical audio input. You have microphone input, so if you have a microphone connected to your computer, then you can also just um, mix in the, the audio input from your microphone, which is a nice thing for let's plays or streams or whatever. Here we have an audio mixer, so you can um, mix here the volume between the game volume, your voice and the PC audio. Okay, um, um, here we have video quality and that's basically the bitrate, so it goes from 0 0.2 megabits per second up to 14. So that's very high and this will affect the file size. And yeah, you can set here a constant bitrate or a variable bitrate. Advanced settings, so what do we have here? Video scaler, okay, let's switch it off. Then we should have full HD actually also on the input side and um, on the recording. And here we have a video encoder, so you can switch here between baseline, main and high, and between different levels. Now, if you're not sure what that thing is doing, I will explain that exactly in my full review, and also um, talk about all those things and how to get the most out of your card. Here we have a video processing amp, okay, so that is basically if the picture is too dark or whatever, you can adjust the brightness, the contrast, saturation, whatever you want to. Here we also have audio encoder, so for the audio quality, bit rate, um, sample rate, downscaling, and yeah, I will capture that in my full review, which settings you should choose. And yeah, different decoders here, you can also switch here between the decoders, so that's a pretty nice thing. Then here we have the microphone, and you can set um, a microphone delay if you want to do that. Um, by default it's on zero, but you can go to the negative or to the positive. HDMI pass-through, oh no, it stopped working, so that sometimes happens, also happened a lot on my Roxio GameCap software, which should still be on my computer, but this was really crashing 5 or 10 times a day. Okay, um, the stream is back on, here we have HDMI pass-through, and you can use TV settings, or you can use the HDPV2 settings, or you can merge both of them. 
And here we have the webcam setting. So I just leave all this on auto here. And if you fuck up the settings, just go here to reset to defaults. Okay, um, here you can edit your videos in the software suite. You can play them. We can just have a look at them. So what have I recorded here? And you see there is no delay on the recording. So that's just a delay in preview. Okay, um, here we have YouTube, so you can directly upload your videos to YouTube. You just choose the video after you've edited it or your recordings and you go to upload to YouTube. And also Stream E, so how you call that, it's in the Hopposh capture tool. I'm not using that. I think um, for streaming, I don't like the software. The hardware is great, but um, there are better softwares in my opinion. And I will tell you which one in my full review because I still have to test it. And I'm not so into streaming, but maybe in the future, because I play now a lot of um, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, even though I don't have so many games for the PlayStation 4. Okay, then let's go here to the settings, and here you can switch the recording directory. I will have to switch it because that's my SSD and it's already full. Here you can also switch the snapshot directory, so you have some pictures in there from your videos. And you can switch here between the video decoding, so full video, iframe and none. And you can choose if you want to use hardware acceleration. Then here we have the webcam settings, so um, that was the face cam you've seen before. It's using my Logitech HD Pro webcam. The cool thing is that you can also input here the XSplit broadcast, and that's for instance some of the streaming softwares I like a little bit more. Okay, you can have a watermark, so personal logo, you can basically place it everywhere on the screen. So that's really, really cool. Okay, so that's the software suite, just a very quick look at it. Um, okay, six minutes, not so quick, but in my full review we'll cover really each setting, what you should choose, what is affecting your quality, what is not affecting your quality, what is limiting your bandwidth when you're streaming or whatever. So we're now here at the end of this first look and unboxing video and so far I really like the Hoposh HD PVR2 Gaming Edition. Seems to be a little bit better than my Roxio GameCap HD Pro but um, the software is still not perfect so it was crashing sometimes but I'm running Windows 8.1, it works perfectly well on the latest version even though the product is for a very long time on the market but there was a software update a couple of weeks ago now it supports many many things streaming not a problem at all and yeah the software suite looks really great even though it sometimes crashes for me okay i will now get used to the device so i want to bring you a full tutorial next week so how to get the most out of that card like the best video quality what settings you should choose then also a streaming guide so how to stream with your console or whatever you want to but um, i will focus on low bandwidth streaming because i have 16 mbits down but only damn two mbits upload and i will only be able to stream in 720p max so that will be a problem but i think many people have a low bandwidth especially in Austria so um, that can be maybe a little bit interesting okay um, yeah just give me some time I still have to check this out I'm kind of new to streaming I know a little bit of video production but I do not stream very often because of my bandwidth but um, this is a nice challenge and let's see what we can get out of the HD PVR2 regarding the games we will stream and for the quality tests I thought about Call of Duty Advanced Warfare or maybe Destiny, but you can just leave suggestions down below and just leave me a comment what you would like to see and maybe I will just do a Destiny raid and yeah, some gameplay in Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. But if you want to see anything else, just leave a comment down below as I've said. All right, if you're interested in the HD PVR2, um, there's a link down below in the description so you can find some info on that box. And once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support. See ya in the full tutorial, have a nice day and bye bye.